Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Craig Button uh, standing by. All of our guests today, including Craig, brought to you by the Bayside Oceanfront Resort, located Oceanside in beautiful Parksville. You been there, Rick? Oh, yeah, of course. Are you kidding? The Bayside Resort is one of Vancouver Island's premier spots to get away, unwind, and recharge. Call now to book your reservation. And mention Donnie and Dolly for 10% off your nightly room rate. Book your island getaway today at BaysideOceanfrontResort.com or call 250-248-8333. Uh, Smitty texting into Delaney's OK Tire and Langley inbox. It wasn't Kobe. That was at Osaka's, the shrimp flip. Uh, Smitty says, I was there. Not that's, me, uh, but That's Smitty. my buddy Smitty from BWC back in the day. He almost got us kicked off a bus. Uh, bleeps and giggles in the back. Anyways, he's a good guy. Okay, we'll get into that story a little bit later. and Maybe uh, fit in a Joey Kenver text as, as well. But right now... Joining us, are you okay? How many times are you going to say his name in one show, Don? Like, my goodness. What? Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Joining us now, TSN Scouting Director after a busy deadline day at TSN, Craig Button. How are you, sir? Hey, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm chuckling. That was a nice little exchange. We can, uh, <laughs> you know, we could, we could have some, uh, <laughs> you know, a discussion about this. I like it. I mean, Rick is clearly irritated, so. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take it much. It doesn't take much, Craig. Yeah, it's like well, when you were. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I, ahead, sorry. Uh, so, Craig, I'm, I'm watching like a lot of people did, TSN's uh, deadline day uh, coverage. And then I tune on, I, I turn on TSN later at night. And there he is again, putting in a, in a full shift. How many hours did you spend in the studio yesterday? Hardest working man. Uh, no, you know what? The, lots of people work hard, Rick. And uh, you know what? The, you know, if we had to do that every day, it would be impossible. But, you know, it's a day that, you know, it's a trade deadline. There's lots of interest uh, across the country and, you know, with, for the fans of their team. So, you know, you just you just do what you got to do and dig in on it. So uh, to answer your question, Donnie, I was in the studio for – uh, probably about 19 hours. Wow. 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 And and, and he, here he is joining us. It, it never stops for uh, <laughs> Craig, Craig Button. I'm not sure if you've been fitted for a title belt yet, uh, Craig, but I thought you knocked out Mike Johnson yesterday uh, <laughs> when it came to your argument of uh, about who the best Canadian NHL team uh, was. You picked Calgary. He picked Toronto. Uh, explain your choice in Calgary. Well, I think they're complete. I, I will tell you this. Mike is so he's so good and everything. And I'll tell you what, I could be on the receiving end of a knockout punch by Mike because uh he's so sharp and, and good. It was just he went down he went down the path of, of if if goaltending and as my friend Bill Waters would say, if, if nuts if if candies and nuts if this and butts were candies and nuts, wouldn't Mike be wonderful, right? You know, so anyway, that being said starts with goaltending okay so goaltending then you go to the blue line it's a complete blue line i mean you got six defensemen there that are excellent and and they're well rounded they're big they're strong they can skate they can move and then you look at the forward group and and, and you can make the argument and we know how good austin matthews is we know how good mitch marner is but you start talking about arguably the top line in hockey with Goudreau, Lindholm, and Monaghan. Lindholm's got to be a leading candidate for the Selkie Trophy. Goudreau's right up there as one of the best left-wingers in, in, in the game right now, along with Huberto. And, you know, you start to look at the depth of this team and the way they play in every single regard. And so to me, uh, you know, this isn't, this isn't a one-week sample. It's not a two-week sample. And, you know, one of the interesting things that, you know, Mike made a comment about, you all, you know, they're, they're firing on all cylinders. Well, isn't that what you're supposed to do to win? Isn't that what good teams do? They fire on all cylinders? Mm-hmm. That's, not, that, that, that's not like, yeah, but, yeah, you, everybody's trying to fire on all cylinders. The Flames have been doing that for a long time. Guys, I got to tell you, watching that game on Saturday night against the Vancouver Canucks, Ooh. I was worried for the Vancouver Canucks. I thought somebody might get hurt in that game on the Canucks side. And Bruce Boudreau said it after the game. He goes, I looked at that team and on the other side, Calgary, and they look serious. From a competitive intensity point of view, those first two periods were not pretty for the Vancouver no, Canucks. No. I mean, that that was uh, that was that was lopsided. 
Yeah. yeah, and you think of a situation for Calgary having lost to Buffalo, and then uh-huh. they'd lost seven <laughs> one to uh, Vancouver last time they were at Rogers Arena. They're, and they're a very good team. There was a lot at play. Hey, uh, Craig, fourth rounder for Tyler Mott for the Canucks. Is that enough? Oh, jeez. I, I, I mean, I, I, the way I look at it is, is that they got to clear up some cap space. That's evident mm-hmm. for the uh, uh, Vancouver Canucks. And, you know, I just think that Tyler adds a lot to your team. And, you know, can you, you know, Jim Rutherford, you know, Patrick Alvin, they've been around. They, they, they have a pretty good feel for what the marketplace bears. And I, I have to believe that, you know, they made a decision that they were going to move in a direction with Tyler Mott that was moving, that was trading him. And, and, and I have to believe that there wasn't a better offer out there. And so they, they look at it and go, okay, we're clearing some cap space. And, you know, this is, this is the best we can do. I, I, I think Donnie, one of the things we, we debate after the fact is enough, you know, what is enough? What does it mean to have enough and everything, you know, you know, every situation is different, but I, I think in the case of, of Tyler, there might not have been very many teams that were mm-hmm. interested in acquiring him. And so that's what led to the return on Tyler Mott. But I, I got to say this, but like at the same time we ask, was it enough? I mean, I mean, I, I don't know what kind of mask they put on to get a third round pick out of Ottawa for Travis Hamannick. Oh, okay. but yeah. I mean, that should be investigated for like for theft. I mean, I, I don't know if it was armed robbery, but it was robbery. <laughs> And they didn't retain any money, which was even better. Oh, my God. Get out of the contract next year. Oh. I mean, Travis Hammond, he's not a very good player. And, like, you know, I have no idea what the Ottawa Senators are doing, but, you know, kudos to the Vancouver Canucks for pulling that one off. Craig, our poll question is uh, asking about the uh, future of uh, Boudreaux. Would you extend him? Your thoughts on the job he's done, and do you think he's earned the right to come back next year? I think he's done an outstanding job, and I absolutely believe he's earned the, the, the right to come back. And ask yourself this question. Okay, let, let's just say that you don't want to bring Bruce Boudreau back. Who, who, who are you going to put in there? Yeah. Who are you going to find better than Bruce Boudreau? Yeah. Good luck. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, good luck. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, but that, you know, I think the easiest step is to talk about, you know, when people talk about changing the coach, that's the that's the first step. The second step, which is the hardest step, is okay. Who are we going to replace the coach with? And right. and that's not easy. Uh, I, I've said this, and 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 it, it's true though. And and there's no there's no falsehood to this. There's 32 teams in the NHL. Half of them have average to below average coaching. That's a yeah. fact. Yeah. Just because you're in the NHL doesn't mean you're a good coach. And, you know, you can go around the league and you can see where coaches have been changed and everything. It doesn't mean that a coach in one situation can improve and become better. But when Bruce Cassidy was with the Washington Capitals, he was far below average. He was hmm. far below average. He went back. He, he grew. He got better. Now he's a really top-notch coach. But at any given time, half the coaches in the NHL are average. Average or below average. So who are you going to replace Bruce with? His record is... Is, is amongst the best of, of anybody that's ever coached. Yep. Doesn't the NHL have to do something about that, Craig? If half the like coaches when, in the NHL are below average? Well, but yeah, so so what I would say to you, Donnie, is is like, uh, what what does the NHL have to do? That's individual teams. Team, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, in, every, yeah. in, in every walk of life, in every yeah. walk of life, there's, there's, there's hiring decisions that don't meet the challenges of the job and the expectations of the job. I, I don't care what walk of life you're in. So to think because it's the NHL and everybody's a great coach, no, they aren't. <laughs> they really aren't. I, I got to tell you this. I talked to Mark Hunter. He's a, he's a good, dear friend of mine. And I talk to Mark Hunter all the time. We talk about things like this all the time. And we talk about coaching. And he says, when you start to go and look and you really start to examine it, I'm telling you, half, average. Yeah, but hold it, Craig. Craig, if they're average in the NHL that many, how many are average in junior? And, and but where are the young? At least, coaches? at least half. At yeah. least half. Okay. And same in college. Yeah. Same in football. That's like, it. It doesn't matter. Like, like, and, and so, like, you're rising up to the NHL. I mean, it's a different challenge. And I, I use Bruce. When hmm. Bruce Cassidy was in the National Hockey League, you know, he, he was abysmal with Washington. It was abysmal. It was a disaster. Hmm. Yeah. But. He, he went and got better. I'm not saying you can't get better. Yeah. But at any given time, look at the Calgary Flames. We just talked about the Cal- – they, they came off three successive coaches mm-hmm. that were average at best. Now they get a top-notch coach, and look at where they're at. Yeah. Something's up. 
Okay, um, you got to set the record straight here, uh, Craig. What what because a lot you know what Canuck Twitter is like, and I'm I'm all for Canuck Twitter. They're they're, is. they're passionate, right? I mean, Donnie you'd rather is. have yeah. passion than indifference, right? But a lot of people were uh, upset because did you say something about? And I couldn't find the clip anywhere uh, about the Sedines getting into the Hall of Fame, not getting into the Hall of Fame yesterday. Oh boy, I guess so. No, we did. We had a little. Mike Johnson and I had a little segment on on the three Vancouver Canucks players up for eligibility. The Luongo for the too. Yeah, Luongo. I, I mean, I'll, I'll go really quick through it. But I, I think Roberto Luongo is is a Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. but, but I also believe in the order of things. I, I think that Tom Barrasso and Mike Vernon are Hall of Famers, and I think if I, if you believe in the order of things, then they should be in. It doesn't mean that Roberto's any less of a Hall of Famer if he has to wait a year or two or whatever. Lots of good Hall of Famers have waited before they were eventually nominated, but I think he's a Hall of Famer. Then the argument went to, I think Henrik's a Hall of Famer. I don't think Daniel is. I think that's what probably got everybody up in arms. But when I look at the argument and I look at the at that at, at how I would make the case for each of them, Henrik was one of the pre was after Joe Thornton for over a decade. Henrik was the premier playmaker in the National Hockey League. He dominated in that position. Daniel Sedin had two Hall of Fame seasons, but never scored 500 goals. You know, never scored 50. Like he's not a player that to me stands out and goes. Like, you know, he had this Hall of Fame career. He, he had a really good career. and and But Jeremy Roenick and Keith Kachuk aren't in the Hall of Fame. Mm. Um, so yeah. if, if if you want to get up in arms, well, that's fine. That's I'm just telling you what my argument is. So that's the, 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 we, we did it yesterday, and that's how I see it. And, you know, Mike Johnson made a good, or James Duthie, I forget, one of them said the same thing. He goes, it could be the first time that two of them are separated in anything. Yeah. Yeah, but, but Craig, uh, I'm, I'm going to go on the defensive here because I know there's a lot of people watching from Vancouver, Canuck okay, Nation, yeah, nope. who would come back back at you. Daniel Sedin has over 1,000 points, over 1,000 games. How many Art Ross Trophy uh, winners uh, of the recent vintage are not, and he is an uh, Art Ross winner, are not in the Hall of Fame, right? I'm, not, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. No, no, you're not putting me on the spot. I, I know the argument. Mm -hmm. He had two Hall of Fame seasons. The rest of his career was just very good. The Hall of Fame's for, for, for like, the special. Like I said, I'm not going to take anything. Jonathan Chichu scored 50 goals. He won a Rocket Richard. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, you know, Patty Verbeek scored 500 goals and had 1,000 points. He's not in the Hall of Fame. Like, yeah. sorry. Like, I'm, like, I'm not sorry. That's the argument. That's the argument I'm going to make. So, like, if it's just about, you know, like, you know, Randy Carlisle won a Norris Trophy. Does he belong in the Hall of Fame? No, like the, the 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 Hall of Fame to me, and it, and and it's a career about excellence, and and you know it doesn't have to be elite. There's the automatics, right? To me, there's the automatics. Just get them in. We know there's sure. one in. Daniel to me doesn't is not a Hall of Famer. Henrik you know, is. We could, we could go on for a long long time, but you put in a big day yesterday, so we don't want you working 19 hours today on this show. <laughs> Otherwise, this argument would continue. <laughs> I'm ready to work it though, Donnie. Uh, so well, sounds we know. to me like you, you're you're using me as your excuse to get out of it. Oh, no, no, no. The clock's ticking. I'm getting the evil eye from the producer here. You know what it's like, Craig. Thanks for this. We'll agree to disagree and maybe continue it next week. We will. I, I'm, I'm, we're all good. We'll bring our we'll bring our best arguments. Okay, I'll, I'll prepare. Thanks, Craig. Okay. Appreciate it. Take care.